Hi, it's Carly with Launch Code. We are in uh, the final round of changes that we need to make to our coding events application to um, be able to actually start running this application again and um, adding event objects and seeing those event objects created and then um, persistently saved within a database. Um, we have one, we have a, a few more changes to make before we get to test that, but just to summarize what we've done so far. So we've created a database um, for our coding events application, and we've connected that database um, with configuration settings uh, to our actual application. Within the application, we've also added uh, dependencies to actually use the entity framework, the, the mapper. Um, and then we've, um, we've slightly modified our event model so that it can be established as a relational object. Now, um, to be able to pass that relational object or pass that relational data um, from uh, the view where it's created back into the database, we need to actually update the controller. Um, so let's open up our controller. It's been a while, I think. Um, since we've um, sort of modified this class. Remember, event data is our in-memory data store. It's a class that we created um, a couple of lessons back in order to store and manipulate application data um, before we got to the step of um, using a database. But now that we are familiar with SQL and from, we're familiar with um, working within databases, now we're, now we're ready to um, just get rid of this event data and use our persistent um, data store instead. So let's go into our data directory and we can just pull this up just for old time's sake. So remember we have this events collection which has now been replaced by that DB set property inside of our events DB con or event DB context object and we have these methods that um, that are, are meant to mirror actual methods um, that can be run on DB context and DB set. Um, so we don't need any of this anymore. We're not gonna be using this anymore. So I'm just going to, well, first I'm gonna close it. And then I'm just gonna go and right click on event data and wipe it away. Now this is gonna have, um, I think I have to wait. Yeah, so I'm just waiting for my, um, Visual Studio to update based off of that change, but this does have some consequences within this event controller class in that because we've been relying on this other class, now we have these little compiler errors inside of our methods that rely on that event data class that doesn't exist anymore. Um, when you're when you're refactoring and, and you're doing something like we just did, uh, you know you can you can generally rely on compiler errors to be some sort of indication of some refactoring that needs to take place. Um, but it's not always going to be, those are not always going to be the only refactoring or the only changes that you need to, to do when removing a file. But in any case, um, so to update events controller to now use our persistent data store, event DB context, we have to actually add, um, add an instance of it, of the class itself as a, a property or a field inside of this events controller class. Um, so I'm going to, add this as private because we don't want it to um, we don't want this db context to be available anyplace else let's say event db context type and just call it context and then in order to um, actually be able to use that context property within the uh, um, within this controller class, we need to pass it in um, via a constructor of events controller. Let's say events controller, and then pass in an item that's of db con event db context type. Just call it db context. All right, so this constructor doesn't necessarily, or shouldn't look that dissimilar to other constructors that you've written inside of um, C Sharp objects before. It might be surprising though, because we haven't, um, well, within the changes, hang on, I'm gonna save my file. Uh, within the changes that we've made within this ASP.NET um, MVC application template, we haven't, uh, 
we ourselves haven't um, um, explicitly called or created a, a controller um, constructor, but they do exist. I mean, it is a class that, that needs to be um, instantiated someplace, but this, the constructor itself is taken care of like via the sort of the, the, the template information that comes with the application. Um, so this might look surprising to, to create a controller here, but this is how we're able to take advantage of um, an instance of our context object. So anytime that you're creating a persistent data store, you're gonna have to do this as well. Something to keep in mind. Um, okay, so, but now that we have access to this item, this context item, we can now replace any instance of event data um, with slight modifications to our syntax, I suppose. So let's see, in our index view, this index controller is in charge of rendering that table of events, needs to get all of the events that exist within the store. Um, I'm just gonna comment this out for now. Well, first I'm gonna copy it actually so that we can kind of replicate it, but I'm gonna comment it so you can sort of look at the differences um, and similarities. So we're still gonna create an events collection within this method, but instead of um, creating that as a list via this event data method, we're going to instead use our context object and get that um, that DB set, remember the events collection that we created, and then we'll just call to list. So the um, our context object has that property events, which is of type DB set. So in order to um, make sure that it's going to be the correct type that our view can handle, we just cast that um, to a list via this casting method. So it's very similar to what we have before. Um, and this does the same thing, really, uh, that event data did using get all, just um, the same information will get passed in, but now we're, um, now we're using the, the context object and not our event data class. So I'm going to remove um, that older method, and now we have some more changes, very similar type changes to make. Uh, nothing to change within the add method that handles um, get requests. Uh, that's because all of all that's doing is is um, is rendering that that add event view form. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the the, the events store. Um, the add method that handles post requests though needs to take in that new event information and save that. Um, save the new event if it's a valid event we needs to save it to the database so we need to update event data dot add um, and actually the method that we want to use is also a dot add but remember instead of event data here I'll come I'll do the same thing I'll comment this out so we can see the similarities instead of event data we need to get it get events from context.events, and then we'll say dot .add new event. And another change that we need to do here is um, we, we can, this line, I'm going to remove the old one, this line actually adds, um, adds the item but doesn't yet uh, store it in the database, so we need an additional method to um, save these changes. So we will say context dot save changes. So that's a method that we're running on the DB context item itself. Um, and so also another thing to keep in mind whenever you're making changes uh, that need to actually be saved, there's it, you're going to be handling them via a two-step um, process now. Okay, next one. So just a caveat on this delete functionality. So the um, the delete views we created before we introduced view models, right? So we had um, created this, or we had written this delete method that's responsible for getting a delete form, and that form is just a list of all of the events with checkboxes to for the user to indicate which items they want to remove from the data store. Um, when we created that, we uh, we were still using this viewbag object 
to um, establish any data that we wanted to pass into the view. We obviously have since moved away from using view bag. Um, so if you wanted to, you could take the time and, and add a view model um, for this functionality or for, for the delete view. Um, we're just not gonna do that in this view, uh, sorry, <laughs> in this video, but you can um, if you want to. Okay, so, but um, since we're still using viewbag.events, so let me comment this again so you can see the difference. Um, this is just going to be the same thing as what we do for um, for our index view for our home page. So we're going to say context events db set and then cast it to a list. And I can remove this. And uh, final um, final action method to update our delete method that handles post requests. So this one. Um, we'll take one or several event IDs and find the uh, related um, or the corresponding event object and remove it from the data store. So a um, couple steps to think about here. So we can use an, um, a method called dot find. Oh, let me see if I can highlight the right thing. Okay. Um, so we want to say we want to kind of intermittently um, establish an event. We'll just call it the event, which will be from context events. And we use this dot find method to find it based off of to find an event object based off of its ID. Um, then once we establish that event, that single event, then we can say context.events.remove. And we pass in the event. And remember, any time that, um, that we are making updates to the database that we want to save, we want to also um, use that save changes method and um, we could I suppose um, save changes inside of our for loop but to save uh, some energy cut down on that cost we'll just do it outside of the loop so that change is made once everything or once all of the IDs have been passed over to be removed so now that we've replaced all of our uh, uses of our in-memory data store with our persistent data store. We're finally ready to run the application. So I'm going to hit run and um, test out creating these objects and uh, watching them get added to our database. So refresh this. And let's see, remember a strange loop. It's been a while since we've created an event. Is a conference. Okay, let's add that guy. Okay, cool. Um, so all indications on this front um, look like uh, we've we're, we've been able to create an entry in our database. Let's go in and look at our database and see if we can see that entry for strange loop. So open up this schema, and I'm going to. Um, when I hover over my events table, you see this little table icon. I'm going to hit that to open up a view um, where I can see my uh, events table. And look here, we have our data. Cool. Um, all right, let's practice with some more. And we can even test out our delete functionality. Let me add a couple more events. Let's see. We can have. Um, do something that's not a conference. So we have our React STL. Um, I guess coding practice meetup with React. 
Connect framework. And I'll leave email blank to see what that looks like. And we'll call this a meetup. Cool, that looks good. And let's add another one. Um, let's say something that's a social, uh, let's say code till dawn is sort of a social thing. Um, let's see, evening to um, code on personal projects with friends. Some plane, plane flying over me. Um, okay, we'll say launch code at launchcode.org, whatever. Um, what did we call it? We said we wanted to do something that's a social, just for practice. Okay, cool. Uh, so we have some items in here. Let's see if these are reflected in our database. So if you don't see, um, if you, like me, keep this table view open, uh, flip back to your application, come back and you don't necessarily, necessarily see those changes, you can use this little refresh button here. Um, so remember, it is a UI, and so sometimes um, we need to, just like when we refresh the browser, sometimes we just need to tell um, tell this application that we, uh, we want to see some changes. Cool. Okay, so we have um, new items coming in. They have new unique primary IDs or primary keys in the form of this ID property, um, and they are taking in this data. Uh, so all of that looks good. Now to practice deleting, um, we can go into our delete view here in the application and we have some options. And I'm gonna practice deleting two at a time. I wanna know if our event, uh, if our delete, that delete post method handler uh, <laughs> is gonna do well deleting two. So I'm gonna say I wanna delete these guys and then I'll expect that we can go back into our table and see only code till dawn. So our application reflects that. Great, so so that's it. Um, we've we've effectively um, connect created a database, connected it to our application, and are now able to um, create this persistent data. And uh, you know, you, I'm I'm able to shut down my application. Um, actually, we can test that too. Why don't we do that? So I'm gonna stop running my application. Um, so now before we made these changes, if I were to stop running my application and then hit run again, if I refresh my page, I would expect that I would get no events, right? But now, let me hit run again, and I'll expect that we are going to refresh this page and still see this ID three here. And hey, looky there. And can we add another event again? Um, let's say strange loop. This will be a good test too for our unique ID. Um, and we'll call it a conference. And uh, so now we're gonna add this event. We'll see the table again. Strange loop is gonna be a brand new event object. So it's gonna have its own ID, um, gonna be number four, even though it has the same name uh, as, as um, that last object called strange loop. And we can see that that item will be added to our database. So here it is in the application. Go back to my SQL workbench, refresh, and there you go. Cool, so now this data is here to stay um, until or if you decide to drop your events table or, or create a new schema for whatever reason.